very pleased to introduce Alexander Gildner, a doctoral candidate at St. Louis University. And by now we know the St. Louis connection here and what's been going on the last two days. So, uh, and, and Father Wayne would love to be with us, but the, the, the new bishop in his province is, uh, that came from his province is visiting there. So, you know, there are certain things the office can't refuse and he's going to, to <laughs> welcome him to St. Louis. But the topic here for, from Alex Giltner is echoes of Erogena, er, er, Erogena in the cosmic exemplarism of Bonaventure soundings in Father Peter Damien Thelner. Thank you very much. Um, I am very, very glad to be here. I'm very thankful, particularly to Jared, for inviting me. Um, I've been good friends with Jared for a long time. I had to read Caritas and Primo several times, not even when I wanted to, but you know, to keep him happy. He's, he can, no, I'm just kidding. He's, it, it is a wonderful work. Um, this has been a wonderful time, so I'm very grateful, especially to him and to Father Coppice and to Father Andreco for putting it together. And of course, to Father Peter, who I've met only one other time at, at your dissertation defense. And then uh, we had some email correspondence, and that's about it. But um, hopefully you'll uh, enjoy what I'm about to say. Um, Ari Eugenia is kind of a weird person. Um, I did my master's on Ari Eugenia. And it was actually by looking at Ariugena um, <clears throat> and then taking uh, some time with Jared and reading the introduction to the Triple Way that Father Wayne had us read in the Bonaventure seminar that made me see that there's something going on here between what Ariugena is doing and what uh, Bonaventure is doing. So, but this is just a speculation. So, in this paper, I do not intend, as is normal course, to prove anything at all. Um, that the parallels of thought and systems between two thinkers separated by centuries may represent an intellectual tradition is always questionable, at least from a historical perspective, especially without concrete evidence or concrete material evidence to back it up, which I have absolutely no intention of providing. However, <clears throat> so that I'm not wasting your time completely, I would rather let this have, want this paper to serve as a sort of think piece on the possible influence of John Scotus Eugenia the famous or perhaps infamous Irish-born Carolingian Carolingi theologian uh, and thinker, on the cosmic, and, and particularly, I, I changed the title uh, a little bit. I made it a nice Yeats reference, uh, so you can enjoy that if you're into literature. And then uh, the, particularly the Christocosmic exemplarism of Bonaventure, because that's going to be the key here. Um, <clears throat> proving such a relation would require nothing less than a monographic study. So I hope you guys are ready for the next two hours because I wrote a monograph to read to you yeah, today. Yeah, we'll be sitting here alone. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a fair point. The thing is, is that I don't mind that. I do that all the time, just to read myself to myself. Um, yet I hope, I hope that pointing out the possibility um, of such a relation uh, by exhibiting said parallels will give impetus uh, for further investigation or at least engender a worthwhile experience for the auditory. Um, many Bonaventure scholars, uh, for example, Edward Cousins uh, and Zachary Hayes have assumed Greek influ influence on Bonaventure. This is no, no secret. Um, namely, this is always considered to come via the Damascene or Dionysius. Um, this think piece will perchance show the need to investigate an untapped resource for Bonaventurian and Franciscan theology. The Maximian, which I won't be able to get to, but that really is, I think, where the, the, the crooks of the matter is, is this is coming from Maximus. Um, the Maximian cosmology as it was transmitted through Ariugena. I am, of course, by no means the first to, sp to suspect this possible connection. Uh, Guy, or, or, or Guy Bougereau, in his seminal introduction, Bonaventurian Studies, noted without qualification this line of influence, uh, though he held it was mitigated by the Victor Victorines, especially Hugh and Richard, which I'm not sure that's right. And he suspects, or he says that the Victorines removed the fanciful elements, or maybe more colloquially, the crazy bits of Ariugena. Uh, I don't know if he's actually right about that, but that's what he thinks. Hans Urs von Balthasar as well uh, speculated on such a connection. And indeed, the esteemed Father Peter Fellner himself uh, related to me via personal correspondence when I asked him about this question that he had himself <coughs> suspected that this might be the case. So, uh, uh, you know, and he, he knows a couple of things. So uh, he's, he is something of a trustworthy source of information. 
Um, yet we have had not much more than these hints, and so it is my contention that this link in the intellectual life of the church it, that must and ought be ex examined, and so I wish here to provide <laughs> incitation uh, for, um, is it too loud? I'm, I'm, I'm a little loud. Um, in, <laughs> incitation for, for additional study. As such, I will be focusing on the basic structure of the cosmos for these two figures, especially the prize place of Christ in this structure. By the end, it should be clear uh, that this inquiry, which I, I myself hope to work out uh, in years to come, is not only warranted, but perhaps crucial if we were to fully understand the cosmology and metaphysics of Bonaventure. Of course, given time constraints, I'll be using broad brush strokes, numerous quotes, and really big, even impressive words uh, to paint a general picture of this alternative narrative. Uh, but I do hope this will provide sufficient impetus for further exploration in the future. So, Father Peter has written in uh, yet uh, unpublished Marian vol volume that's coming out. And so it was so interesting that Jared quoted exactly this the same quote to us yesterday. But Father uh, <coughs> Fellner writes that exemplarism is not only the starting point of all theological method, it also underlies all reasoning as rooted in the power to compare, assess, judge in terms of a standard. It is, uh, further down along the line of the quote, the dogmatic formula at the heart of all biblical exemplarism, one person and two natures, hypostatically united, re yet really distinct, undumbrated in the notion of being containing its intrinsic modes, permitting us to reason typologically or significantly. Significantly being actually the word uh, significantly. I'm, I'm, I'm interpreting you, but I think you meant signifying or the significatory nature of things. Um, and the thought form, and so the exemplarism is the thought form which enables us not only to compare finite exemplatum with infinite exemplar, uh, the ars aeternus, I, aeterna, the rationes aeternae, um, but eventually recognize the son of Mary, the son of God, whose incarnation is not only the primary basis of the possibility of creation, but for its eventual recapitulation, Integration within the circle of divinity vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the unity of the infinite and finite divine being and human, the substantial unity of one person without confusions of natures or pantheism. End quote. Mm -hmm. I think this is exactly what's going on in Bonaventure, and I think it's exactly what's going on in Eugenia. Mm -hmm. The movement of exemplarism is the standard by which all things are understood and is fundamentally really the basis of reality. All things are rooted in exemplars, that is, the divine ideas, and those exemplars are rooted in the exemplar, that is, Christ himself. The exitus reditus narrative of the universe is by no means unique to Arianism uh, or Bonaventure, but the fact that Christ is mediating the agent, the mediating agent of every step in that narrative, with the cosmic word and the word made flesh being both the anchor, mediator, and constant motion of this schema, and that this Christ uh, includes Christ not only in reference to creation, but to the life of the Trinity ad intra, is at least in the West, peculiar indeed. So getting to it, Bonaventure writes, and so all these quotes are in um, another, it, it's, I think it's German, um, in your handout there, but so you can check and see if my translations stink. <laughs> Um, or if I'm, you know, messing around with the context or stuff. Some, some of them are longer. I, I cut parts out, but I wanted you to have them. Um, I didn't note, uh, to, to my chagrin, which ones were Bonaventure and which ones were Eugenia. I assumed everybody could figure that out from the titles. Um, I thought there were smart people in this room. Um, the word, therefore, Bonaventure writes, expresses, extreme, uh, the Father and the things that were made through him, and by collecting us, principally leads us to the unity of the Father. Um, and according to this, he, the Word, is the tree of life, that because through this center, medium, which is going to become just a key word, uh, we return and are vivified in this font of life. This is the reducing metaphysical center, again, medium, and this is our whole metaphysics. That medium is our whole metaphysics. Christ is our metaphysics. Um, regarding emanation, exemplarity, and consummation, namely to be illumined uh, through the spiritual rays and reduced to the highest, and so you will be a true metaphysician. 
This very famous passage, passage serves not only as the grounding framework for Bonaventure's theology, but also this presentation today, and comes perhaps ironically in the middle of Bonaventure's, the middle of Bonaventure's first collation, where Bonaventure means to show in a triple sevenfold manner, not very Bonaventurian at all, uh, that Christ is the medium, the center of all things and all metaphysics, and this is no exaggeration. To be a true metaphysician is to recognize the basic triadic and paradoxical expression of the word from the Father as transcendental communicability, the agent through which of all of creation comes into being, and through which all of creation is brought back into perfect union with the Father. For Bonaventure, theology begins with two interrelated points of reference, the Trinity and the person of Christ. These two points form a sort of double helix uh, from which all theology and ultimately all reality flows and finds its end. As we shall see, Eriogena has a fundamentally similar view. Bonaventure's cosmic drama is centered around, well, the center, Christ, who does indeed hold, sorry, Yeats. In the life of the Trinity, he is, according to Bonaventure, the word who, and, not, and this is a quote, uh, which is the imitative, imitative similitude of the Father and the exemplative and operative similitude of things and holds as the center, ita tenet quasi medium, um, and the Father is said to operate through the Word. He is thus the expression of the Father, of the Father to all and every other thing. In Hexameron 9, uh, two, because the word expresses both the Father and himself and the Holy Spirit as well as all other things. And this is rooted in Bonaventure's notion of divine hierarchy, which we can't get into, but which is also very, very important to his metaphysics. The word is center uh, both ad intra and ad extra in the word's mediatory role in the Trinity between the Father and the Spirit, in the roles in Christ's mediatory role between creator and creation and between creatures. Christ holds the medium, this is the hypostatic union, so the, Christ holds the middle, the medium position in all things. As he, as he says in Hexameron 3, the key, therefore, to contemplation is a triple understanding, intellectus, the uncreated word through which all things are produced, the in incarnated word through which all things are repaired, renewed, revived, reparantor, um, the inspired word through which all things are revealed. Unless one can consider these things, how they originated, how they are reduced to their end, and how God shines forth in them, one cannot have understanding, intelligentium. I didn't know how to render those two words differently, um, so I just gave them to you there. Eriogena 2 connects the word's generation to creation, the creation's procession. In the second book of the Paraphysion, he says, uh, therefore, before worldly times, God the Father begat his Son, in whom and through whom he created the most perfect primordial causes of all natures, which bring to, per perfect, uh, to perfection by their processions through generation at certain times and places and in multiple differences of, gen uh, of genera and species, this visible world from the start to the finish. So, as he says in, hum in his Hamilia on the uh, prologue of John, and seven, for his generation from the Father is itself the creation of all causes and of every operation and effect that proceeds from the causes into the genera and species. Mm -hmm. Naturally, all things were made by the generation of the God word uh, from the God principle. So it seems for Eriogena and Bonaventure, the life of God ad intra orders the God's work ad extra. And that work is specifically mediated through the divine ideas, the exemplars. Um, there is a distinction here. Eriogena says they're created. Bonaventure seems to think, uh, at least in um, the itinerarium, I remember correctly, that they are, they are not created. But I, I, I just think they're languaging it differently. Um, but in any case, that's something for another day. What is crucial to note here is that the divine and created order are both centered in emanation and attest to the basic circularity of all things. Both these theologians, which is nothing special, love the image of the circle, but it's orbiting around the second person of the Trinity. The world is, that is, it exists and is known and knowable through the emanatory exemplarity of the eternal art, common name for the word in both Bonaventure and Eriogena. Within this art are the ideas that emanate out into creation in similar fashion as the word is emanated from the Father. As, are, as all real knowable things, for like Dionysius says, the knowledge of things that are is the things that are. 
emanate from the words so that we can quote itinerarium 2.8, see the eternal generation of the word, the image, the son, eternally emanating from God the Father. And then itinerarium 3, it comes therefore from the exemplarity in the eternal art according to which things have an aptitude and relation to each other according to their representation in the eternal art. Thus, exemplarity grounds not only the knowledge of things in certitude and without which there can be no certitude, but also the certainty of real things ontologically rooted in the art himself, for in him we live and move and have our being. Those things that are emanated are the ontos of all reality, the basis of every creaturely being. For Ferreira Eugena, these are, in one aspect of the word, he puts a lot of weight on this word, the, 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 uh, the theophanies, the manifestations of the divine. So in Paraphysion Book 3, the divine nature allows itself to appear in its theophanies, willing to emerge from the most hidden recesses of its nature. And from the primordial causes, uh, the soul implants, that's the antecedent of the word there, implants itself within the cognitions, or perhaps even recognitions, which are, also, which are usually called by the Greeks theophan, uh, theophanei, um, and through them it receives some, that is the soul, receives some notion of God. Again, when the divine nature appear, had, begins to appear in its theophanies, it is said to proceed, as it were, out of nothing into something, and therefore every visible and invisible creature can be called a theophany. This gives both Ereugen and Bonaventure a robust ontological foundation of all creation. God is known and is in the world through the ideas that have emanated from the Word as the Word has emanated from the Father. Christ is the medium and the expression of both the divine and created order, holding the center place in the Trinity in all things. The true metaphysician recognizes this basic reality. Christ is the center in which all things hold, representing the role of communication in the Vita Divin 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 I cannot pronounce today, Divinitatis, um, both ad extra and ad intra, communicating the inatiable, incommunicable primum principium as both cosmic word and even more crucially for us, word made flesh. Indeed, it is the incarnation that draws all aspects of the creation uh, and cosmos together. And of course, both hold to the primacy of the predestination of Christ as uh, the incarnate word. Uh, being the perfect med med mediation uh, of them. In the, first, in the first book of the sentences, the prologue, just as in a circle the last point is conjoined with the beginning, so in the incarnation the highest is conjoined with the lowest and the first in the final. Or as he says in the Reductio uh, 5, by similar reasoning, reasoning, therefore, we come to the conclusion that the highest and noblest perfection cannot exist in this world unless that nature in which the seminal principles, i.e. the ideas, uh, are brought together in the unity of one person as was done in the incarnation of the Son of God. But why? Why does this drama turn upon the incarnation? Well, because of sin in the fall, in part, but there's a more fundamental reason. Again, we're thinking in terms of primacy. It is because of us. We who are in the drama of creation as humans. According to the second book of the sentences, man is the middle creature formed from the mud of the earth, de limo terrae, um, but also the celestial nature. In the Breviloquium 7, and again, I'm sorry I'm throwing so many quotes at you, but I kind of have to if I'm going to show the, the, the connections. And so, to reveal divine power, Bonaventure says, God brought forth all things from nothing for his praise, glory, and honor. A certain part of God's creation, material nature, um, is close to nothingness. Another part, spiritual nature, is close to himself. These two natures has joined together in the human being into one person, namely a rational soul and a material body. Christ is the mediator because man is the mediator between creation and uh, between creation and uh, the mediator between creation and God. This third book of the sentences, a center never unites Jungi, the extremes unless it has a union, conjunctionum, or in some uh, manuscripts it's communicationum, with both. Therefore Christ would have never recalled us or reconciled us to God unless he had become God and man. Man mediates the entire cosmos. Humanity is the middle point of all things. The microcosm on, in which the whole of the macrocosm subsists 
through which the cosmos was created. At the most basic level, humankind, contain, humankind contains both the sensible natures of rocks, plants, animals, and the intelligible nature of angels and corporeal beings light within itself. Like Christ, indeed ma modeled after Christ, man is the medium. In Paraphusium book four, all things were created in man. This is a very Maximian principle, uh, that being Maximus the Confessor. Both Bonaventure and Ereugena hold that man is the crown of all creation, the apex of the cosmos, and through which all things were supposed to, ought to, and should return. Ereugena writes in the second book of the Paraphusion, Therefore it was to this end, as we are given to understand from the discourse of the aforesaid master, that is Maximus, that man was made among the primordial causes in the image of God, that in him every creature, both intelligible and sensible, of which he is composed, as of various extremes, should become in an inseparable unity, that, and that he should be the mediating term and unification of all creatures. Again, we see this word extrema both in uh, Arizona and Bonaventure. And Bonaventure says in the second book of the sentences that God makes human life, anima humana, as the end and consummation of all things. This is according to, well, I'll skip that part, actually. It's a note about Genesis. Um, so the first and final purpose of the incarnation is that all should become, through mankind, what they were intended to be, as they were intended to be, through God's intended means, mediated through the exemplar who emanates and draws all exempla back to himself, through himself, to fully participate in the divine life. This is the final reditus or cons con uh, consummatio, why Bonaventure says that Christ is our metaphysic, this is the interpenetrating power of humanity as the crown of creation and is taken up in the word. And so through the word, all things are brought back along the path of return into God. And so finally, we are brought back through the word made flesh to the ultimate first plenitudal font of all being. Bonaventure, nearly, uh, Bonaventure declares and nearly narrates his entire cosmos in Dubium 7 of uh, Distinction 31 of Book 1 in the sense commentary. And because God the Father is the principle or beginning, principium, of, all, of the Son, and the Son the principle of all things, so then the Son is produced and produces, and so all things are reduced through the Son to and in the Father. Um, it, it's a relative pronoun there, but I inserted the Father. And therefore, reduction is aptly appropriated to the Son. Um, or, as Ereugena proclaims in Homilia 21, the word did not become flesh for his own sake, but for us who could not be transmuted into the sons of God except the flesh of the word. He descended alone, he ascends with many. He who made a man from God makes gods of men. That is, he possessed our nature so as to make us share in his nature. And so the cosmos is consummated. Christ all in all, the center of all things, the mediator of all things in the Trinity and in creation. Bonaventure says in the third uh, book of the sentences, the desires of all human nature were completed when the work of the incarnation in the most noble fitting way reduced human nature to the perfect act, that is, the divine unity. <coughs> As it is in the divine life, so it was intended in creation, lost but then regained through the incarnation, which itself is the transcendent point of motion back to the creator, where all things are brought back through the ideas, causes, or exemplars that form the basis of their ontology, to the primal source, the primum principium. Okay, and so, uh, just uh, to end, I, I was gonna say some things about how uh, this is uh, related to uh, Father uh, Fellner's um, Marian exemplarity and how he roots that in Marian metaphysics, but I'm out of time. So I'll just say this is really just a taste. Whether these parallels seem compelling or superficial, it should be enough to incite interest in the source material say the 12th century explosion of interest in Ari Eugenia uh, or the material evidence, for example, the Dionysian workbook, uh, Paris Lat uh, 17341, where there's a bunch of Parafusian quotes even after the Parafusian was condemned in 1325. Um, yet it was these conceptual parallels that made great scholars like Father Fellner speculate about such a con uh, connection. And it should be clear that these parallels do not just re represent a few corresponding concepts, but as I hope has been shown, they sh represent a shared theologic between these thinkers. The very anchors of cosmological and theological thought for these theologians both work and relate within their grand systems in strikingly similar, if not at times identical ways. Many have spilled ink on the unique patterns of, and systemizations of Bonaventure and Ariogen respectively. Perhaps more ink, precious though it may be, is worth spilling on whether Ariadne does not just does not just echo in Bonaventure, but resound in him, and by extension, the Franciscan intellectual tradition. Thank you.
conversation. Thank you. I was personally convinced that that uh, Bonaventure, he doesn't quote or mention the name of Ever Eugene. Uh, it was, it wasn't the right thing to do <laughs> yeah, if you wanted right. to stay func uh, functioning theologian. Right, where you're right. in those days, it still is difficulty because right from the beginning, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, with the uh, circulation uh, during the lifetime of John uh, Ever Eugene, I mean, simply the Irishman. Every <laughs> uh, Aaron, Aaron, that's uh, Gaelic in origin, and Jaina is ultimately Greek in origin, born Irish, literally. Anyway, he was acquainted with quite a few of the Greek authors, both uh, the pagan and the, and especially the fathers of the church. And his attempt at uh, formulating a coherent the uh, the theology was inspired in great part uh, as well. For the West at that uh, at that time, we're talking about the so-called Dark Ages <laughs> at, this, at this point. So, Eriuchen uh, uh, made quite an, an, an impression. The center of the controversy. Uh, nobody denied that. He, uh, uh, again, it's hard to get a good English translation. Although I hope some people do it. It is difficult uh, because of all of the uh, idiosyncrasies in his use of Latin influence uh, Irish words. Greek words. Neologisms, he makes up words all the time. And making them up as they yeah. went along. So to figure out what exactly he was meant and how you could express it in the, in, uh, uh, in the language that we are familiar with is not, not an easy task. But the basic difficulty, right from the beginning, was the accusation of pantheist, pantheist here. I don't think uh, I don't think he is, but it's not always easy to show that he that, that he isn't and uh, uh, explain why so many people interpret him, read him in that uh, in that sense. Some because they want to be pantheists themselves, and some <laughs> some because they hate all panthe uh, pantheists in any shape or shape or form. Leave that aside. Uh, but there is, in fact, a great deal of value in the uh, in the writings of Eugenia that are open to easy correction, correction, uh, correction used by somebody like Saint Saint, Saint Bonaventure within the Franciscan order. We have a parallel about that. It's been done over the over the century. You don't want to say you quoted so and so, but he does have some good points. So I'll use them without quoting, make believe they're mine. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the Saint Bernardine with with uh, Ubertino Casali's. Eternal, uh, eternal go uh, go go gospel, and, and so forth. And so so forth. You hear about a whole whole paragraph. There is are some things that are objectionable in the spiritual Franciscans of that uh, that time, but not everything, everything. And some of them were brilliant, uh, brilliant scholars in in, in many, many, many ways. Saint Bernardine, we knowing all about these things and how dangerous it would be to quote quote from them, and he, uh, uh, or even avert to uh, uh, let people realize that he was reading this sort of a uh, thing, he simply took all sections, uh, sections out, uh, sections out, and uh, put them in his own work as though he was the uh, he was the author. Uh, 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 so uh, uh, I think uh, your conclusion is is true. It's not merely that there. Uh, Sentence here or a sentence, a sentence there that coincides, but there were the whole trend of theological thought that uh, that uh, 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 tends to merge as, uh, as a certain point. That someone with the intelligence of uh, on a venture case, it just doesn't simply co uh, copy, but effectively eliminates those elements that lead to the accusation of, yes, of pan yes, pantheism. Yes. You're often uh, often running, but there's no question in the Middle Ages that despite the condemnations, continuous condemnations, as uh, mm -hmm. John Eugena was well known and read and studied. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I, mean, uh, was, I don't think you can uh, simply say, oh, uh, the saints wouldn't have done a thing. I think, I think like, like that. The fact is, a lot of saints did do things like that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't considered that there, there was no, there were no copyright laws. Yeah. Uh, nobody, well, everybody. Uh, 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 Why well, was considered the virtue to hide the authorship? Uh, uh, so that. Okay, I'm going to have to uh, have us break because we've got ten minutes, and then Father Angelo will continue, and then I'll. Pull everything together with some some points at the very end. Okay, or, or try to pull together major themes. Thank you.